Hello and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the Duckworth Lewis system. Now, with only five weeks to go into this World Cup, there is so much cricket to chat. We've got the Aussies taking on the South Africans. We've got the English taking on the Kiwis. And of course, we've got the Asia Cup. We've got India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh and Afghanistan all fighting it out just before this World Cup starts. So let's bring in these experts. First of all, Gilly, Perth and Vaughan. Where are you today, mate? Uh, I'm down in Somerset uh, Pro, just uh, watching a, a massive under-18 3D game. Uh, Somerset versus Warwickshire. We're, we're one day in, uh, two days to go. Magnificent cricket. That's outstanding. What's the uh, phone reception like in the cubicle in the toilets there, Vaughan? Is it It's <laughs> 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 great, mate. I'm actually going to walk. I'm, I'm going to walk because... I'm just going to take you through here. This is the honours board. Oh, come on. The, the mighty Taunton Vale Cricket Club. Melvin Gale is the chairman. I see him on the board. Uh, Hugh Kelly is the first 11 captain in 2018. Uh, I'm guessing uh, Hugh's still the captain, or they haven't had a captain since. So um, that's where I am, Taunton Vale Cricket yeah. Club. It's an, odd spot. it's an odd spot to have the honours board, isn't it? Down in the bathroom downstairs. But anyway, uh, Prof, uh, gents, I'm at, at home in Perth. But Prof, I'll go back to you because we've got a very special guest on with we us. We do. We do indeed. Um, well, this gentleman is known worldwide as, I'm going to call him uh, one of the great gurus of cricket. And at a time when Asia Cup is, a well, it's just kicked off. The Pakistanis are taking on the Nepalese. Please welcome Harsha Bogle. Ho, Harsha, how are you? Thank you, very, thank you very much to the prof. I'm glad you got in before Gilly did because he might cast aspersions on where I'm sitting at the moment. <laughs> Just to ensure that doesn't happen, I'm sitting in an office with someone else's medals behind me. <laughs> there are there are lots of medals behind you, so I don't know whose office you've stolen. There's all t- you got cricket ball. It looks like you got a couple of Oscars there. Whose office is <laughs> this, Tasha? No, I, I, I'm in the cricket ball's office. Michael knows it well. I thought I'd order a resort of because that's what he does every time he comes here. <laughs> oh, very good. Now, Vaughny, right off the bat here, there's something you want to bring up with Harsh. Is that right? Well, yeah, Harsh, yeah, um, the office with all the medals, I like to see trophies. And I, I have to say congratulations to India. Um, you finally got a big trophy in your hands just a few days ago. Niraj Chopra. Hey, hey. Yes. Yes. Niraj I can talk with that one. Yeah, managed to beat Arshad from Pakistan to that uh, World Championship uh, javelin throw. And I, 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 the, winning, yeah. the winning throw, if you, if you Google it and just have a look at the winning throw, he releases the, the arrow, I call it the arrow, and he, he, just really, <laughs> and he knew straight away he just turns away and he's won. He knew he just <laughs> perfectly timed that release. Uh, yeah, so you've got, you've got a trophy in India. You're not very good at winning trophies these days, so well done. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Gilly comes off the front foot to you. I, I thought you'd give it back to him. You've taken on me. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you what, we were, we were overjoyed, not just because he won that, but because he added an Olympic medal or World Championship. But we're on the moon, you know. We, we, we sent our spacecraft mm. to the moon. Everyone, everyone's very happy. There's a, the landers come down. It's going around the moon. So yeah, we got lots. We got lots to be happy about. And, and not sitting where you are in a in a fancy studio. <laughs> well, what is the turnaround time on now when people start saying that India never landed on the moon and that it's all fake and it was shot at a studio? Does that sort of take fifteen <laughs> to twenty years, or what are we looking at here? I think it's easier to land on the moon than to set up a fake. Then it's set up a fit. I mean, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Now, Hush, this Asia Cup has started right now. Pakistan taking on Nepal. I will give you a live score update. Uh, two for 44, Pakistana. Um, Nepal, it's their first time in the Asia Cup. Can you tell us mm. a little bit about the Nepalese team and, and what they're hoping to do in this, world, in this Asia Cup? They've come out. They've come out firing, full of spirit. They've earned the right to be here, in Nepal. Normally, you think of Nepal and you think of Mount Everest, and you think, yeah, that's where you climb to go onto Everest. You think of Hillary and Tenzing, but they've, they've earned the right to be here. There's no Hong Kong here. There's no Oman here. There's no UAE here, who are their better-known siblings in our in, in this in this fraternity. So they've done well to come here. They've got one player that the world outside knows in Sandeep Lamichani, the leggy. But there's there's a couple of good young players. There's this fast bowler who's just come and knocked over. Who's come and knocked over Fakhar Zaman, uh, Karan KC, They had them down 20, 25 for two. 
with a directed run out because Imam Ullah was running a bit like his uncle did. So, <laughs> Harsha, um, just on you know the Asia Cup, um, the Club Prairie Fire podcast is uh, obviously to do with friendship, fellowship, and obviously the odd bit of tequila. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to uh, the first few episodes, but we're, we're, we're campaigning to bring uh, Mexico into the world uh, cricket game. And we're, we're going we're gonna to own the, the Mexican Cricket League uh, very soon. It's uh, in strong no- negotiations. Do you th- I mean, you're a powerful man in world cricket. Do you think you could get Mexico? I know it's not in Asia quite, but maybe just sneak them through the back door for the next one. Is this is, is this the new avatar of Michael Vaughan on this on this podcast? I mean, I always thought him to be slightly hard but genial and friendly. And but I'll tell you one thing about Mexico, though: if you do have a league in Mexico, you'll get very good food and you'll get enough in, uh, enough Indians and Caribbean people to form six teams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and Vaughan, I'll jump in there. You say that yes, Mexico is not you know geographically part of Asia, but. Australia's in Eurovision, mate. So I reckon the Asia yeah, Cup could true. fit Mexico in there yeah. easily, but quite easily. But Harsh, it's a, it's um for the non-playing, non-participating nations of the Asia Cup, it it fluctuates now, doesn't it, between 2020 version and ODI version. This one, of course, uh, the 50 over format leading into the World Cup, and it's uh, it is India who are the current holders of that trophy. And. It, the tournament is planned such that if there's a T20 World Cup, then you play it over T20 format so that it serves as a preparation tournament for the World Cup. So now with the 50 over World Cup coming around, they're playing it over 50 overs this time. The last one was over 20 overs. So it's a nice flexible format where the idea is, I, I mean, I, I think it's an open secret. The idea is how do you get India and Pakistan to play each other three times? <laughs> and so you have, an, you, you have an Asia Cup. The funny thing is India and Pakistan have never played the final of the Asia Cup yet. After all, after all these years, oh, so wow. really, that, that yeah. hasn't happened so far. I, I'd like to see that happen this time. Pakistan on top of their game, they're playing fabulous white ball cricket. Uh, for, for India, it's a big tournament because every time the World Cup comes around, we start searching for a number four. We seem to have number four every time when the World Cup comes around, we start searching for one. But there's three or four key players coming back from injury. So I think that is the key thing at this Asia Cup. Uh, Harsha, what I enjoy about Indian cricket, when, when the, the squads are announced, generally there's always an outcry for players that aren't in the squad to be in the squad. Um, which is the, So Harry Brook's not been in the provisional uh, England uh, World Cup team. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll make his way in by October. Uh, which is the one Indian player that you feel it isn't in the squad that should be in the squad? I think there's a lot of talk about Chahil, about Chahil not being in the squad. But none of our spinners bowl. The only spinner who bowls, other than Jadeja, who's an all-rounder, is Akshar Patel. Otherwise, your batting ends at number eight. None of the fast bowlers bowl, other than Shardul Thakur. And none of the spinners bowl, other than Akshar Patel. So, if you want to have someone who bats at number eight, you can't have Chahil. You can't have Chahil, Kuldeep, Bumrah and Siraj. Or you can't have Bumrah, Siraj, Shami and Kuldeep, if that's the way you want to go. Because the batting ends at eight. So, they, they couldn't find room for Chahil. I think that's, that's been the biggest talking point. Otherwise, no, I think the team pretty much, selects, pretty much selected itself. There's talk about whether KL Rahul can come back and, and be fit in time because his, his numbers in the middle order are, are fantastic. Otherwise, I think they'll look at Sanju Samson or maybe young Tilak Varma, who's, who's made a very good start. But otherwise, really, it's like any other country where there's 17, 18 and you choose 15 or 16 from them. Mm. Yeah, but actually, come back is a big thing. Yeah, and Harsh, um, unsurprisingly, I'm, I'm interested in that keeper batsman position. You mentioned KL Rahul, and uh, does he come straight back in? I believe the first couple of games, he might be down at the NCA, just fine-tuning things after the fitness issues. Uh, Ishan Kishan, he had a, a pretty solid uh, representation over there in the West Indies, but um, who do you see uh, featuring in that position, both in this tournament and then in, into the World Cup? I don't think they have any option but to play Ishan Kishan in the first two games. But they're yep. very, very keen for KL Rahul to get it right because, because of, his, of his record playing in the middle order. But what that does, interestingly, and both of you are better placed to answer that, maybe Gil even more so than Michael because he's the left-hander. It means India don't have a left-hander till number seven and mm. only, ever, only play one left-hander. Unless, I mean, Kuldeep will come and bat down the order. But yep. otherwise, there's no left-hander till number seven. So I think that they'd like to play Ishan Kishan, but KL Rahul's numbers are that good. And the other spot is Shreyas Iyer. He's been out for a very long time too. So he's fit now. He's coming back. So in a sense, the Asia Cup is, is a kind of getting to know them better, getting to see if they're fit. 
both Shreyas Iyer and KL Rahul. Yeah, and, and I, I won't hog it, but can you give, um, for those listeners and viewers um, that aren't getting regular update, uh, Rishabh Pant, where, where's he at? Where's his progress? You see the odd little social media clip, him walking around. I know he joined the Indian training the other day just as an observer. What's the latest on his progress? I saw a video clip of him batting, and the only video clip I saw, Gilly, as you'd imagine, was him hitting a six. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but if he, can hit, if he can hit a six even in a practice game, he's doing okay. My first reaction was, honestly, I don't care if Rishabh Pan doesn't play a match, doesn't hit mm. a ball in his life again. He's just, he's just lucky to be alive. Yeah. I don't know if you saw pictures of the accident. He's just lucky to be alive. Yeah, but he's is. ahead of schedule. Apparently, he's worked very, very hard. He's trained really hard. So apparently, he's a couple of months ahead of schedule. So while he definitely won't be ready for a couple of months, they're hoping that maybe by the time England come back, come to India to play test matches in February. Wow. If he could, if he could be ready by, by February, that'll, that'll have kept him out of the game for a year. But that'll be, that'll just, it, it's a bit like Yuvraj coming back from cancer. If he just comes back and plays, yeah. that'll itself, be, that'll itself yeah. be huge. Highly agree. Totally agree. Yeah, we're, we're big, big, big uh, Rishabh Pant fans on the, the Pro 5 podcast. Uh, uh, Harsha, I think... Um, the big question that I want to ask you, really, um, and it's, it's been a, a debate over the last few podcasts, um, you'll, you'll probably agree with me, I hope, that you know, England uh, won the Ashes uh, fairly and squarely. Um, clearly, Australia have become very boring. I'm sure you'll agree with that as well. And England are saving the world with the way that they're playing. Is that right, Harsh? <laughs> I would love to just be a fly on the wall while you and Gilly have that have that conversation because I find I find I, I saw Stuart Broad say something about it. I find that England England are looking for ways to own the Ashes, and they say all the matches that Australia won don't count. All the sessions in which Australia <laughs> scored runs don't count, and all the sessions in which Broad took wickets count. So therefore, we should. Nah. No. Uh, but, but but you know. England are making all of us sit in front of our television screens and watch mm. and watch cricket. I, I still think the, the uh, best thing that happened to England was that 2015 tour. 2015 World Cup. Have you ever seen a more boring Australian team than this one? <laughs> uh, Borny, Borny. We've got a very special guest here. Don't stay feeding this rubbish in, all right? No, 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 I got the feeling England with the new Australia and Australia with the new England. Oh, oh Harsha, that special. kills me. That's an arrow through my heart. That's the javelin <laughs> thrower throwing things at me. Harsh, Jeez. Harsh, Harsh, uh, producer, uh, just cut and paste that, that little segment. That's all that will. That's there's your promo. There's your promo. That will. That will never see the light of day. That will be binned very quickly. Hey, well, Harsh, while we've got you there, and we do want a non-biased observer, this Johnny Bairstow stumping will not go away. It will not leave the Aussies mm. and the English alone. The Aussie cricket team spoke about it this week. I don't know if you saw. Um, the guys from the great cricketer, they were interviewing them. And five of the Aussie cricketers, so Usman Kawaja, Mitch Marsh, Manus Labuschagne, Travis Head and Steve Smith, had a very good old laugh about what happened in the lunchroom directly after the stumping. Uh, now, the story is that, and I'll abbreviate this somewhat, that they all went into the lunchroom. Everybody sat down. All the English players got their food, but Johnny didn't put any food or any plate in front of himself. He was too upset, <laughs> which, Vaughny, I mean, that he must be really upset, right? Is that what you'd say? Yeah, I, I would say that Johnny likes a bit of food, so he must have been angry. <laughs> and then the story is that the, uh, the actual stumping was on loop in the room. So in one, on one of the monitors, everybody was watching it, having a little giggle, and Johnny said to the Aussie guys, are you guys happy with that? And then apparently Dave Warner, uh, spitting out his chicken, has said, yes, very. And then all the Aussie cricketers have had a bit of a laugh. Now, Asha, where do you sit on the stumping? Did we break the spirit of cricket? Or are the English a bunch of whingers? <laughs> Gee, that's, the, the, the second option's a tough one. All I <laughs> I, I, I didn't play cricket anywhere to the level that Michael or Gilly did, but all I was taught was that there is a crease. There's a reason there is a crease. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a crease. That the reason the crease is you've got to be in, inside the crease. Uh -huh. I, mean, I, mean, I, come from the, I come from the land of Ashwin, don't forget. So for me, if you're, yes. if you're yes. outside, it's out. But I, I didn't know what the fuss was about, to be honest. I did, you went outside the crease and you got out. If I was, if I was Michael Warren, the captain of the England side, I'd have called Johnny aside and said, 
that that is a bit stupid, don't you think? Don't do it again. Let's let's get back to playing cricket again. He's a he's a he's a tough cookie, Michael. He's not one of these very sentimental spirit of the game kind of captains. He would he would have just called Johnny and said, "Don't do it again," and let's get a move on. Yeah, Harsh, I was very clear on it. Johnny was just a bit dozy, I'm afraid. But also um, in this clip that's just been released the last day or so, I think it's Mitchell Marsh at the end. <laughs> that as they were leaving the the, the lunch or maybe Usman Kawaja. They noticed that a few of the England players were chuckling themselves. Now, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't categorically tell you the truth of, of what absolutely happened because I wasn't there, but I get a feeling that that is the truth, that one or two of the England players were <laughs> probably chuckling <laughs> <being clever. laughs> I, I love this. I, I love this avatar of Michael because all we read about Michael was this very tough, hard as nails England captain who played the 2005 Ashes. And, and here's a completely different version of him. <laughs> Thanks, Harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if, if, all that, if any of that's true, but if there's one part of that story that's true, I think it's wonderful works by a man that is now part of a, a team that you've been part of, Harsh, and let's hope that it's not too distant future that you can be part of, again, the Fox cricket team. David Warner's coming on board with Fox. If he's answered that way, yes, very I oh, reckon that's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that's what, a fine thing, bit of work. <laughs> the good thing is, if we work together, is that there'd be two people from Hyderabad on on the same team. Because David Warner used to be Aussie. You remember the time when Warner was Aussie? A long Warner time ago. Aussie. That's a long time ago. <laughs> Warner from Hyderabad. Yeah, so hey, Vaughn, <laughs> Vaughn, did you also notice in that clip that a certain moustache is back? Thick well, and hmm. luxurious. Yeah, I'm a bit pissed off with that. Yeah, you know that. I, I, did, I, did, I did notice that Travis said he started to try and grow the tash again. I mean, Harsh, just go back to the start of this podcast. Um, we are developing a, a tequila brand as well, um, and it's a very prominent uh, brand that's going to be global, and it's called El Shito. <laughs> um, and we were looking for an ambassador to take it to the next level, and. Obviously, uh, Mexican with a big tash, we, we, we targeted, we could obviously have targeted Murph Hughes, but he was a bit obvious, so we targeted Travis Head with the tash. So I went, on it was at Edgebast in day three, I went and asked him if he would be keen on being the ambassador to El Shito, but he had to keep growing the tash, and he agreed, and he came on the podcast, and he agreed to the contract, and it was a, it, I think it was a lifetime contract to be the ambassador was. to El Shito. It was. And he, he, he trimmed the tash, so we had to get rid of him. And then, the, and then, the rash, so and then the runs him. dried up. And then the runs dried up in the ashes. <laughs> the runs dried up. Well, Gilly, what's I mean, one, one look at that moustache, Mike. Sorry, one look, look at that moustache. And, and you know it's a better batter than, than a grower of a moustache. It's very clear to me what's happened. Travis has got back to Australia, and he's gone, oh, shit, I've missed a massive opportunity oh. here. And he's trying to get back on with the with the ambassador. Well, I, I've got to announce now that he's gone. We're not having him back. All right. We cannot have him back. <laughs> that's, he can throw it as long as he wants. He's gone. He, that's he that, broke the contract, Travis. That's that hardened captain you're talking about there, Harsh. What's... It's, yeah, but it's a bit that's odd, isn't it? I mean, I'm looking at Michael, looking clean shaven on this picture. I'm looking at Gilly. Gilly's got a little bit here and there, a bit of a stumble. Mm. But it's 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 a bit rich that the two of them are deciding that a rich moustache should should allow you to be a brand ambassador. Yeah, it's right. take both take both of us about a year to get anything close to a decent moustache. <laughs> you know that. Harsh. <laughs> it's taking a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, harsh, I mean, harsh, 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 I, I, I couldn't think of anyone better. Ooh. If oh. Oh. If you want to try and get a curly whirly growing. <laughs> You know where I'm going, Big opportunity. Get in at the ground floor. He completely covered his mouth there. Yeah. When, now, when, when you get to my age, all you young folks, when you get to my age, you don't grow moustaches because there's no black left in them. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> now, something I wanted to bring up with you three guys that have been in and around cricket for a long time is there was a moment in history overnight. I don't know if you saw this. It was the first red card in the history of cricket. In the Caribbean Premier League, the Trabago Knight Riders were given a, a red card for slow over rates. Mm. Um, they're, they're trialling it in the Caribbean League. I don't know, Harsh, if they're trying it in the Asian Cup. They, they probably should. But the um, 
Yeah, I think it's a good thing as well. The the punishment is that you have to you lose a fielder and you bring up you get six inside the circle, which uh, it didn't end up affecting the night riders, but it's quite a good initiative for a couple of reasons. One, you're down a player, but also it means that everybody can see which player in a team the captain thinks is the shittest <laughs> straight away. <laughs> What do uh, they discuss the selection policy of, of who the player is to disappear, or because it's it is an interesting um, thought process for a captain, but but it, it is to be applauded. Something has to happen. Something has to give. So I, these I, are the I, tournaments I where they need to need to trial it. Uh, we've got other issues in the game, Harsha, that we were discussing last podcast that that should be trialed at various levels. Um, one of them being that umpires. Rather than using the index finger, if they've got a bit of a beef with one of the batters, they might raise the middle finger to give them out. But that, that, that's something that we're going to trial in junior cricket first. But uh, but no, in all seriousness, I, I don't know what you two guys think. I think that um, they've got to do something about these overrates, and, and finding them ain't working. Pasha, uh, I'll back me up on Crick Buzz. Um, quite a long while ago, we talked about you know this happening, that actually players should be sent off. But we also spoke, Harsh, didn't we, on Crick Buzz, that the captains should go to jail. <laughs> lock, lock, lock them up. Only a retired captain can say that. But I did get the impression at some T20 games I was at that they had, they were discussing the intricacies of a free trade agreement between nations, between overs. They were taking that long. I thought there were a couple of lawyers debating on the intricacies of that by the time they bought the next ball. <laughs> Well, I, 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 do, I do like what they're doing in the Caribbean. I think it's the, the right way. If you're slow on your over eight, why should, you know, being penalised, obviously having one more player in the circle penalises you somewhat. But that reason, Pro, that you mentioned that not only is it going to obviously uh, help the batting team, as it should because you've been slow with your over eight, but it's that, it's that embarrassing moment of that one player realising <laughs> that he's the, he's the worst. Fielder, worst fielder yeah. in the team. It's like when they used to pick a team. They'd pick teams at yeah. school and you'd all line yeah. up with your arm out and you were the last one picked. That's a oh, horrible feeling. Should, all right, this is... Do, the players should have to walk off and there should be a wheelie bin that you have to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you right, so, Vaughny, here's your opportunity. Let's go back when you were captain. Red card comes out. Um, which player were you picking... <laughs> As me? your man to go off. Me? Oh, you, I'm right, okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> right, fair enough. Yeah, makes I, sense. I wouldn't be able to get off quick enough. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Now, Harsha, you, you're a busy man. You've got this Asia Cup to look after today. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Um, sure. We look forward to, and, and, um, and have you, just before you go, Gilly during the week predicted an Australia v England World Cup final. That was last week. Um, prof, 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 yeah, no, that's that's old. That I was at a media day with the Australian players. I've got a harsher right. boglay on here, mate. India in the final for sure. Okay. No doubt about that. <laughs> so, Australia, Australia, India, now we're about the Poms. They're gone. They didn't pick Harry Brook, the idiots. Yeah, bro, I, I'll, I'll back that up. I mean, um, we, we as a, a new podcast need a lot of followers, so India is going to win the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> you can't want to step further. You know, Prof, you know how the world has changed. When I first started going to Australia all those years ago, they'd look you in the face and say, mate, you guys are hopeless. And to think that in my lifetime, I've got one of the legends of the game turning around and saying, now nah, we've got him on the program. Let's talk up India. Gee, that's, that's a change of a lifetime for me. Huge changes, huge changes. So do you want to give your prediction? So obviously India to win, who will they meet in that final? Is, is, is that a prediction or an aspiration? The... Uh... <laughs> Both, I guess. What's your uh, what's your prediction? My aspiration, of course, that India play by yes. in the final and win by three hundred and forty-two runs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> possible. Yes. Well, I, I, I think I think Australia, England, Pakistan, to me at the moment look like the three best teams. Uh, if, if you just look at the way they're structured, they look like the three best teams. Right there, you go. Fair but it's typical Indian to underplay ourselves, you know. Who of knows? Roy Chawa might make 264 runs again. Virat Kohli might make a lot of runs. Kuldeep might yeah. bamboozle everybody. But there's four or five teams that could win it. But I've done the typical Indian thing. I've, I've been around the bush and told you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Uh, well well uh, Thanks for joining us, Harsh. 
We'll speak to you I'll soon. I'll send all my love to the, uh, the Crick Buzz team. We, we have a great uh, time in Mumbai. Uh, we do eat lots of risotto, but uh, send my uh, love to them all. I'm ordering yeah, a risotto in your memory. <laughs> they, they cover cricket well. <laughs> Cheers, Hash. Good on you, mate. Cheers. How good to have Hash on. What a champion. Right right, now, Ash. I've only just quickly on your... By the way, um, can I, can I, just, uh, yes, can you I can... just go back? Did he actually say, um, I think I heard him say that uh, England, Australia, Pakistan to win yeah. Yeah. So he's actually not even mentioned India. No. <laughs> he said they were the three he, best sides. So I will, I, will, yeah. I will also say that he mentioned the moon. He might be sent to the moon. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> <For saying> that. <laughs> on the next expedition. That's, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's our social clip to lead with, guys. I know you thought it was the other one. That is, we are going to push that out to the whole of India. That's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, real good. Hush. Yeah, great. Um, hey, on your initiative, Vaughn, of um, giving the middle finger instead of uh, the index finger for giving people out, there was a bit of chat of that online. Uh, people can get in touch with us at Club Prairie Fire absolutely everywhere. Um, the thought process here, Vaughny, is that in rigi- uh, like first go, it's the index finger on the original decision. But if a batsman refers it uh, and then the batsman gets it wrong, yes. then the umpire can give him, give him the bird, yeah. give him the middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think I of that? Think, I mean- yeah, I, I did notice that Fraser Stewart, who I mentioned uh, on the pod from the MCC, uh, he actually quote tweeted it and said he thinks it might be difficult, just going straight with the bird. So maybe we ask him again yeah. that it's first and foremost the index finger, then the T comes up for the review. Yeah, you know, very much like so. Stewart Broad, I reckon, in his career would have got more birds than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you mean on the field, right? Not just when he's walking down the street in Australia. And... Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hello, Stewie. Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, just just quickly, that's a nice segue. You say that there, um, Prof. We want we don't want to stop just yet on the on the possibility of the uh, the bird being the mode of dismissal. But talking yeah. of confusion, there, our erstwhile producer, who's AWOL at the moment, Ollie. Ollie, yes. Having a glance at his social media since the last podcast. And there was one post he put up, PSA, public service announcement. After some fight drama, it looks like I might be partnerless for the Holy Eight mixed foursome this weekend. Any gals want to step up and save the day, I can guarantee a good time and at least one one green in reg. The next didn't message. Write that. Didn't the, next, the next <laughs> message that comes up, and bear with me, let me just bring this up. The next message that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, I've replied to your story. For those not sports savvy, this sounds like you're asking for a partner for a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's totally, totally lost the plot there on social media, Ollie. So perhaps he's in the scene for, for a week. We've got to help him out, boys. This, I mean, it doesn't sound like this ray of things going too well. Surely a couple yeah, of guys well. in your pool can... <laughs> Line up I mean, I'll someone. Be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I can. I, I've known a bit about this rare from uh, uh, back in the day with a few of the England lads. It's quite a high-profile, um, quite high-end uh, dating app. You know, you really do have to be siphoned through to to get on that app. And what the fuck has Ollie got on it? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been, I wasn't a bit surprised myself. You said he was on. I don't right? know, but when we're all in person in the one room, we are getting on that app. <laughs> We've got we to uh, do some yeah, work I mean, for him. I, I, gotta... I, won't name, I won't name names, but I do know uh, of, of at least one England player a few years ago, um, three or four years ago, who was refused entry to the app. Ooh. And paid. Ollie can get on it. Is wow. the, Ollie's, on it. <laughs> Ollie's surname is Silverton. Is that some famous English mm. family? Vaughny, is there the Baron <laughs> Silverton or Lord Silverton? Uh, I think he... No? he I'll tell you what, he's a busy chap, Ollie. He goes everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he's Rick. he's filming for the Ryder Cup in he's Rome. He's at the Ryder, Ryder Cup. Yep. Then he's off to the, the rugby. World Cup, the women. Yeah. yeah then he's off to the World rugby Cup. World Cup. He's on the biggest he podcast some time in the world. For us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, apparently he's been... The reason he's not on, the story is that he's in the air because of all these flight dramas in, in the UK. He got stuck in Rome. Um... I think his his uh, date for his foursome left him, and I mean, who knows? But, um, he will be back next week, and I'm meant to be doing his job, which is pushing the socials and chatting a bit of the cricket that's going on. So, 
Guys, I do have a little quiz lined up. Again, he hasn't written it today, so it's <laughs> it's not going to be as skewed towards Vaughny. It might be more down the middle, which is uh-huh. good. Um, obviously, in about not long now, the Aussies take on the South Africans, 2 a.m. Sydney time, 12 p.m. Perth time, 5 p.m. UK time. Yep. Um, three debutantes for Australia, Matt Short, Aaron Hardy, Spencer Johnson. Do you want to touch on this quickly, Gilly? What are the Aussies trying to do? Bit of a trial run? Just blooding a few players, mate. There's a number of them injured, resting, doing all that stuff uh, back here in Oz before the World Cup. So good chance. Aaron Hardy, outstanding. Big bash last year. Good fine all-round cricketer. What did he slot in at number three in the bash and just creamed him. Just played with great power. Johnson, obviously, um, part of the winning set up or uh, certainly the franchise of the Oval Invincibles who picked up the 100 trophy. Big Tommy Moody in charge. Yeah. Well done to him. Big shout out to him. And uh, and it was a Southern Brave, was it? Vaughny, I think, picked up the women's title, did they, in the in the yeah, um, 100? And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we've got one more debutante there. Uh, Matt Short, was it? At, uh, yes. He's going to get a crack. Again, he, he was yeah. unstoppable on the, uh, in the Big Bash last year. But uh, final round cricketers, but I'd be surprised if they end up on the plane to the World Cup. Spencer Johnson last week, Gilly, you were raving about what a beautiful specimen he is and oh, handsome and he devil is. and he is. how, uh, you know, the ladies that. love him. Yes? I didn't mention about ladies love him. No, I just said it was my observation. Okay. Okay. Gilly loves him. Um, but what was written, Bergy 646 has commented on, uh, we put it up on the socials, he wrote, uh, almost flew over, this is about Spencer Johnson, almost flew over to Edinburgh to represent the Azuri in our World Cup qualifiers. But now that dream for us has faded and he re- res- uh, deservedly got a call up to the green and gold. The Italians, Vaughny, this is Bergy 646. I think he might be the actual coach of the team yeah. that they were trying to get you to coach. We know well, Bergy. Gar- you know him. Well, Bergy, well Gareth Bergy and, and myself go back a long way because yep. uh, back, in, back in my management days of the master team that I didn't play but I managed, he was one of my players. So he saw <laughs> he saw the skill levels that I had. That's why you know I'm I'm being touted as the next Italian cricket coach. And it's you know it's close. We're in early early kind of stage negotiations. Uh, but Bergie's a, a tremendous all rounder. Uh, does well with the Italian side, and obviously they were after Big Spencer. Uh, by the way, which you have to take credit for from an English perspective because he was shit until he came and played in the hundred, and then. Obviously, the 100 has made it into the bottle that he is. So, full credit to the England system. I think he went all right <laughs> last year in the Big Bash, Forney. It's um, Yeah, I played with Bergie at Middlesex. So, uh, yeah, final round cricketer and uh, leading the way for the Italians there. Now, just on your management skills, Forney, mm. are you, where are you rating yourself or where are you being rated by others? Up somewhere alongside the best manager in the EPL at the moment, Ange Postacoglu? And I like Hans, yeah. He's good. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I like big Hans. And I, I do like Robbie Williams going online and doing yes, that. that was it. good, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was cool, yeah. Uh, no, I'm nowhere near Hans. Hans is, I, I reckon Hans is going to be the surprise. But they got kicked out of a cup, a Tom Noddy cup last night, Tottenham to Fulham. But uh, yep. I think he's going to be the surprise package of the Premier League this year. And yeah. I just think he's got absolutely everything going for him. He's quality he's manager. Cool dude. Well, cool dude. he survived at Celtic, which I mean, mm. they're crazy up there. Which I can say that because I married one. I'm married a Glaswegian. <laughs> it gets for Celtic, what? so I'm allowed to. If you're listening to this and you're from there, don't come find me. Yeah, <laughs> you've got one in your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, now, uh, same time, one hour later. So let's do this. Three a.m. Sydney time, one p.m. Perth time, six p.m. UK time. Uh, England take on New Zealand in the first of four T20s. Uh, Joss uh, has come out, Butler, and said that this is just a good chance to blood a few of the new guys. Um, four people backing up from that. Ashes, Forney, you got any mail for us? What are they going to do here? Are they going to try? Is it? Uh, are you going to mention Basball here or something? What, what's happening? I have no idea what they're doing. I haven't been reading about it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. No idea. Perfect. Um, and golf Kiwis. course, wouldn't they? <laughs> yes, yes, they would be. Hey, um, gents, there's not much else to cover here unless Gilly or Vaughny, you had anything else going on in cricket? Oh, 
how's, how's Archie Vaughan going in that game? Oh. Get any runs? Is there an, he, did, he, he managed to sneak a few yesterday, and unfortunately, on 97, he got given the bird. Oh. <laughs> He's the first recipient of the bird. Yeah, <laughs> or, or, or did it just feel like he was getting the bird? Was it a stinker of a decision, was it? Yeah, a bit of an inside tickle, got the bird on 97. Well, what I liked about him, he, he, took, it, he, he, took, he, took, he took the, uh, the, the decision in great grace. I did was he? so proud as a father, sat on my deck chair as he walked off and he got, he got beyond the rope and started to throw his gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Good parenting, that. Yeah, I went, oh, yeah, that's it. Well done, son. That's it. Take, take a, a, a real poor decision in uh, great grace. So, um, yeah, he won't, be doing, he, he won't be doing that again. <laughs> well, so, so I must admit one of my proudest moments, and I, in all seriousness, here was when my, my eldest boy was in about year eight or nine, about nine at school, and the opposition were chirping him just about, you know, never been as good as the old man, really rubbing it in him about, you know, the name and the pressure and the build-up of being the son. And anyway, took centre, Rissold first ball, middle stump out of the ground. The, the opposition have charged in, given it to him, give it send off. And Harry just stood there, looked up at the umpire and just said, uh, can I check that? <laughs> Is that middle? <laughs> and the, the opposition just started laughing their head off. And he, I think he broke down the barriers there between him and the opponents about talking shit about who he was. But um, needless to say, the next bloke got out first ball too. So he was the middle of a hat trick. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, very, dear, very dear. good. Now, guys, it is congratulate, uh, it's funny, you guys. Just congratulate the Aussies. Uh, you did win a, a, a game over here. Um, the under-19s won the second uh, one-day game against England under-19s. Yep. Um, so I think what's happening in that is that obviously Australia have got a long way to go to get to work. England are in the white ball games. giving them a bit of a leg up you know, around that kind of age group just to give Australia a little bit of hope for the future. Uh, but you did win a game. Nice. Well done. Nice. Very good. Very, very gracious of you. Now, guys, we are running out of time here. All that's left yes. is the quiz. Now, we are just five weeks away from this uh, World Cup taking place in India. Neither of you played a World Cup in India, but you both did play plenty of ODIs mm-hmm. over there. So, today's topic yep. is Gilly and Vaughny playing one day internationals in India. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty specific. <laughs> Pretty specific. <laughs> um, pretty self-explanatory here. Same old thing. I'll come to you if it's a question to you. Uh, the other guy can have a, a guess, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right. Hey, question number one. How many ODIs, Gilly, did you play in India? Oh, I debuted in India. Um, in a place called Faridabad. Uh, but that's not the answer. Let me think. One, two. I don't know. Seventeen. Seventeen? Forney? How many did Gilly play in India? In India, I reckon I played not too many. I'm guessing I played five. All right. Gilly, you played 30, so you were 13 oh. away. Jesus. Vaughny, you played six, so you're only one away. So <laughs> ding, 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 that's one for Vaughny. <laughs> All right. All uh, right. How many countries did you, this is to both of you, how many countries did you play ODIs against in India? Gilly? <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, New Zealand, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, the, the, the West Indies. I'm going to go five. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Can you get the fifth how one? Did you do that? <laughs> The, the fifth the fifth one. Uh, did you get the fifth one? No, I didn't name five, I don't think. Or did, I didn't name India. There you go. India, ding, there ding, ding. Yeah. Uh, Vaughn, you seem very confused by that. Well, did you play a World Cup in India? No, no. no the, the old Triangulars played yeah, a Champions Trophy. We won the Champions yeah. Trophy there in uh, 2006 or something. Hmm. All right. I, I get this question. Now, I, I played against one team in India then. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Oh. So that's one. That's one, <laughs> one point each. It's going to be more my way this time. That's <laughs> as easy as it gets. Yeah, that's true. Although, he's correct. Ding, ding, ding. Who had the highest score out of you guys? Oh, Gilly. Definitely. Gilly. Yeah. And Definitely. Gilly, all right. Extra points. How, how many run? What was your highest score, Gilly? And what was your highest score, Vaughny? 
I'd have got a 64, I reckon. Yeah, right. I'm going to go 111 in Bangalore. Yeah, very good. Ding, ding, ding. Gilly, 111 in Bangalore. 111 <laughs> off 104. <laughs> Vaughn, you got a 63. Ah. Oh, nearly. What did so, he say? 64. 64. So you got yours uh, in Cuttack at the Barabadi Stadium. In Cuttack, uh, 63 off 99, and Gilly, 111 off 104. <laughs> 63 off 99. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> well, that just pro- that, that, that absolutely proves what Harsha said about England and Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't going to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right. Who had the higher ODI batting average in India? Ooh, we you let your 60. I mean, you only played four other games, but you got a 60. Was it a 60 red? Nah. Yes. No. Nah. Was it? Well, it as must in... have. Red ink. Was that not out, that 60 that Vaughn got? It I must have been it off 90. Possible. It must have been cruising to a small win or something. But um... No, no, you were out. Sorry. Uh, well, no, Collingwood I was 71. Got... He was man of the match. Gilly. Out. Gilly. Uh, yeah, I'll be self-indulgent and say me, but with no confidence. Correct again, ding, 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 uh, but oh. not by much, believe it or not. So, it? Gilly, 32.5, Vaughny, 29.4. Mm. Yeah, but what, what was the strike rate? <laughs> <laughs> Do you to, if you hold on, I can look them up. Here we go. <laughs> nah, strike keep it rate. Moving. Keep it moving. Um, 96.94 for Mr. Gilchrist. Yeah, I reckon 74. 72. Is that career? That's it. No, that's in India. Oh, that's just in India. In India. Yeah, in India. Do you want to know yeah. career very quickly? I reckon uh, I'm 69. Uh, sorry, Gilly, you are quite right. That was – you were 97 in India, 96 in career. Oh, I have to really let the <laughs> horses in India. Good yeah. spot for you. Uh, uh, yep. Born in 68. And then 72 yeah. in India. Both of you liked the subcontinent tracks. Mm, very yeah. good. Yeah. Um, all right, last question. It's it's currently Gilly's out by one, so he's out to a one point lead. Yeah. So you can tie it here, Morny. Yeah. Who had who had more ducks in India? In India, in ODIs. Gilly. Forney. <laughs> if I'm right, then. it was Gilly. Gilly had more ducks in it. Too. <laughs> uh, I, still, I, I, I thought five games compared to 30, there was a good chance it was me, but geez, I was going to laugh if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so that's it. You're tied. Five all. Um, tiebreaker. Have we got a tiebreaker? Hold on. Hold on. Let's come nah, up with something very quickly now. I'm, I'm thirsty. Let's get on with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> very good. Hey, um, all that's left to do now is, I guess, the toast. This is when Ollie normally comes in. He says, follow us on at Club Prairie Fire Yes, for everything. Um, and then he says, boys, it's time to do the toast. So let's grab it. Yeah. I noticed. Have you got your your traveller there, Prof, or not? I, I do. I do. But they're still, still not tipping for... in. Yeah. yeah no I'm yet, still waiting for mine to turn up. But anyway, did yeah. you give them the right address? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've. I mean, I said, send them care of the prof and I'll get them to you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> send, send the cans. Um, nice little wall out the front. Gents, I'm, I'm actually playing a bit of A grade tonight. I've got a very nice one, a, a Grand Patron. This is a like absolute Rolls Ooh. Royce, this. And for two reasons, um, not that he's a, a drinking man, our man Harsha Bogle, but of, of Indian heritage, I know that the Indians... They like a, they do like a whiskey. I mean, they all drink responsibly. They do like a whiskey over there. This is a tequila that slightly more whiskey overtones, if that's what your uh, tipple is. So for our subcontinental fans, and also I'm going to have it in my Carlton Football Club shot glass. Now, Vaughn, I know you're an Adelaide Crows man. They did not make the eight, mate, so unlucky to them. But uh, Carlton are back after 10 years of being on the sidelines at September. So I'm going to 
raise a little toast to them in my Carlton uh, shot glass. And for those that don't know who Carlton are, Google it, mate. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh, just, just to let you know, I, I didn't bring my tequila down to Somerset and they don't have tequila in Somerset. It's oh. just one of those places. That it's, very, right. it's a bit backward, this place. It's very dated. Uh, right. So I, I'll, be, I'll try and find something later on to uh, toast you all. Um, but that, what did you say that one's called? Gilly Patron? Yeah, it, it's the same as the Patron Silver that we've had, but this is the, the big granddaddy yeah. of it all. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Nice drop, that. Very good. All right, all right. I'll uh, raise a toast to that. And also to, hopefully, Ollie getting Fin- some in Rome. Finding Ollie. Finding <laughs> Ollie. <laughs> yeah, getting some. Yeah, he'll get some. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, doesn't get any easier. <laughs> doesn't get any easier. Uh, all right, gents. Hey, that's goodbye.